Hello guys, today we have another product from IC Station. They've sent us this little photo transistor here and that is the little uh, device you can see in the middle of the PCB here. And what that basically does is absorbs light in a certain frequency range and this particular one happens to absorb light in the visible spectrum. So what you'd usually use this for is to detect uh, when it's getting dark outside maybe switch on some spotlights outside or you might use it in a night light maybe uh, you turn on some lights for a child when the lights go out put on some uh, dim uh, low power leds maybe but i think um, according to the data sheet anyway that this is used normally in things like phones and tablets to adjust the brightness of the screen when you go from a really bright outside light to a dark inside so that the screen is still visible and still still easy to read. So what I'm going to do today is just show you how it works and see if we can maybe use it in some of our designs. I have a few ideas and I'm not sure if they're going to work but we'll just give it a go and see. Okay so now I have my multimeter here and if we take a closer look at our little device here, we're mounted on a PCB. We have a 3mm mounting hole here, so that's all very useful. Um, then when we take a look at the inputs here, well the inputs and the output, we have a V, a G and an S. And the V is the positive voltage, G is ground and S is the signal. So what I've done here is hook up a 3.7 volt battery to the V and G lines. So that's the two on the left hand side of the screen here. So V is on the leftmost pin, G is in the middle. And then on the signal, which is on the right hand side, I've connected the other arm of the multimeter. And as you can see, we are reading a voltage here. Now, that voltage is proportional to the light intensity. So at the minute, we've a little bit of light coming from a light um, which I have just above the camera here so if I block the sensor we should see a reduction in the uh, voltage here maybe I'll be able to show a shadow going over So you see our sensor is measuring the light intensity. So that light bulb is a kind of a warm light. Uh, it's kind of similar to what you get from an incandescent light even though it's an LED light that I'm using. But let's take a look and see what happens if we shine different coloured lights on the sensor. And also uh, what if we uh, shine infrared light on it. Okay so I've turned off the uh, bigger light above the camera here and what I'm going to do now is just bring over a few different colored LEDs and see if the spectral response of the power of the um, phototransistor here uh, can make any big impact on our uh, voltage here. The problem with this test is that the uh, output from each of these LEDs is going to vary hugely so some of them are really focused and some of them are quite bright so although we have the same um, the same resistor for them all, their, uh, the voltage drop across the LEDs are different, so there's going to be different uh, different light intensities, but we'll give it a go anyway. So the spectral response of our phototransistor here is around about 400 terahertz to 700 terahertz, I think. So in terms of wavelength, that's like 400 nanometers uh, all the way down to like uh, 800 and or 900 nanometers, so you're... Uh, getting into infrared there so we will try an infrared LED as well and see if we get any different kind of response from it so let's uh, start with our first LED here we'll go for a basic uh, red LED so this is just a normal 5mm LED not very intense and brings us up to about, about 1.3 volts uh, it's pretty focused this LED it's not terribly bright so let's try something in a different frequency range. So that would have been at the lower end of the spectrum there. That red uh, would have been uh, the lower frequency, a longer wavelength, around about 700. Um, I have a green LED here. This is going to be around about 550 um, 
nanometer so it will be in the middle of the spectrum and we seem to have way less power there now maybe there's just less light from this particular LED so that could be it there but I think you would have expected there to be a, a higher voltage reading here because I think the peak of the spectral response was around about the, uh, the center of the visible spectrum there let's try this little orange one that's a little bit better I guess uh, that is probably somewhere between uh, 600 and 700 nanometers orange so I have an intense uh, blue LED here uh, blue is around 500 nanometers so uh, quite a high high frequency there and this is obviously quite an intense LED so yeah it's pretty much putting the phototransistor fully on there when I get the light over it and this is also very focused so you can see the the beam there so we have a, a very focused beam whereas the other LEDs were spreading the light so now I have a white light so previously we were using warm light from our main lights above so let's see if the pure white light yeah it's pretty much the same as the blue light I think yeah, it's pretty much opening the transistor up completely now the final LED is one that I used in the uh, RC controllers this is 870 nanometers it's an infrared LED I don't know if you can see purple in there maybe not so let's see if the infrared uh, LED will have an effect that seems to be around about what the uh, the white light LED was doing so it's pretty similar so here we have a very basic example to show you how you might use this system so I have a dual color LED here so we have red and green and all I have done is a analog read of the signal coming from our sensor here and then based on that analog um, analog reading it will fade the LED from bright red when we have low light intensity being measured to uh, bright green when we have a high light intensity so now I'm going to bring in the light and you should see the red LED fade to green so you can see that switch over there now if you wanted to control your outdoor lights for example all you'd need to do was instead of uh, changing the fade on this LED would be just switch on a, a well probably a relay to uh, switch on some uh, outdoor spotlights or maybe some garden lights or something you could use it for something like that another thing you might be able to use this uh, photo transistor for is in applications like line following where you need to be able to determine the difference between say a black tape or a white tape and maybe a white or black background so I'll give you an example of how this might work I have just a white card here and if I bring that over between the sensor you can see that our sensor is picking up a, a lot of light there that's because the white surface is reflecting but if I just take a bit of black plastic you can see we're not getting the same uh, well we don't seem to be getting any uh, change in light intensity but realistically we are but what you do there is as your robot moves along it will measure uh, the signal there and when the, the signal goes high it means that there's a lot of reflection so if your background is white that means you're off your line if your line is black there will be low reflection when your sensor is above the line so you just need to detect the low light and stay on that path rather than moving off where there's a lot of reflection that's how that kind of sensor would work okay so let's take a look at how maybe we can use this or at least uh, an idea that I have so we just seen that we could probably use it to determine a white line on a black background or a black line on a white background so maybe we can 
uh, place a white spot under our trailer and we'll be able to detect when the bed of the trailer has lowered fully so that's what I'm going to try now I have the uh, well super bright white LED because that was able to uh, turn the photo transistor on fully and the photo transistor is hooked up to our uh, multimeter here so if we put the trailer on I have the mask and tape here to hopefully reflect some of the light and let's just see what happens I'm not sure if this is going to work but we'll give it a go so when we're under the trailer we've obviously uh, dimmed the light a little so let's see if we bring down the bed of the trailer well our light went down and then up a little so maybe our sensor is too far away let's try that again okay let's try this again I've raised the uh, LED and the photodiode up a bit there so let's see if it's any closer this time okay so mostly what happened was our uh, trailer blocked out the shadow so I don't think this idea would really work for this type of thing. Maybe an infrared version of this, an infrared rangefinder, we might be able to use it. Even if we had the infrared rangefinder at an angle, we might be able to follow the distance of the uh, trailer bed as it raises up and might be able to get an accurate uh, measurement of distance. But it looks like this idea didn't work anyway, so maybe we'll try the infrared in another video. Obviously the best way to do it would be to put a potentiometer back on the hinge at the back of the trailer and then you could just measure the output voltage from the potentiometer as the trailer uh, raises and lowers, it would be exactly the same as the servo. So that would uh, probably be the best way to do that. But we'll give the infrared method a go in a follow up video just to try something different and not just do the same things that everyone else does. But it looks like uh, for this application, the photo transistor uh, just isn't going to work. There's just too much light uh, surrounding the model. So that's a few examples of how you might use this little sensor. If uh, you liked the video, make sure and hit the like button. And if you like the product, there should be a link in the description below. You can uh, head on over to IC Station there, have a look at their products. And any comments or suggestions, let me know below the video or head on over to the forum. And I think that's pretty much everything, so thanks very much for watching.